Well, hello everyone in Radio Land today. I am Dr. Sonia and we are here on Hashtag Truth. I'd like to thank our wonderful radio station, Artist First Radio Network for hosting us here today and um, our wonderful producer extraordinaire, the Z-Man. Thank you so much today. And we have a special guest today with us. We have wonderful, um, she's my sister in Christ and, and an attorney as well, uh, Chris Crystal Lowry. Um, how are you doing today, Crystal? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Sonia? I'm doing great as well. Um, well you look great. It's well, good to you. see you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, it's good to see your face too. You look beautiful. So we're going to have an awesome show today and we're going to be talking about some wonderful devotional things and just uh, spending time with Jesus. But before we get started, I always love to honor our guests. Uh, Would you love to lead us in a word of prayer, Crystal, before we start the show? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we have together today. Thank you that um, we can just spend this time over the airwaves sharing the good stories about you and what you've done in our lives. And I pray that all of this points to you and that the the listeners will take it and that it will be turned into beauty if there's ashes in their lives, Lord. And that, um, you know, that only your goodness will come of this. And we thank you for honoring the words that we speak today. Holy Spirit, speak through us. And we love you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. That's beautiful. And so um, I, I, we, I, I'm so excited for today. I've been waiting for this for, for, for so many weeks. I'd probably say almost for, I've been waiting. I didn't even, before even having the radio show, I was waiting. Um, but I always like to just tell our listeners a little bit about how, how we know each other. And so you and I actually met, um, what, I think actually, did we meet, was it two years ago on a, were yeah. you, you were on the Peru crusade too. We met on the Peru crusade. And then, um, which when I'm saying crusade, it was um, a mission crusade with Bridal Glory International. And we were both uh, participants there to just share the gospel with the people in South America. And we really, you know, so we became friends, but this last year in 2019, you and I, we, we bonded, we were able to sit next to each other on the flight. Um, I think we were coming back home. And you yeah. were able to tell me a lot more of your testimony, and um, I was I was just blown away. But it was it was such a bonding moment, and I I, I always laugh because I say the Lord always you know He puts us right where we're supposed to be because um, I I, I'm, I I He usually sits me next to people on planes who sometimes get a little anxious on the flights and you 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 uh said that to me that you you get a little anxious with flying and we were able to sit there and just hold hands and pray and it was so beautiful and you were you were able to just share your story with me and um and I, you know I was I was so blessed by the experience it was just beautiful it was beautiful well it's been such an honor to get to know you as well because I know um actually we didn't have all the time to Mm -hmm. you know we were so busy working um Mm -hmm. but it was so good to have that time just sitting there and I think it was a four-hour flight something like that yeah back to um Miami I think so Mm -hmm. was so good and I enjoyed it (laughs) amen (laughs) amen yeah Mm -hmm. yeah me too well you know I don't like to tell um you know, someone else's story. I love for the people to tell their own story. So would you tell our listeners just a little bit more about yourself and, and, you know, we can just dive in deeper into, you know, everything what God has has been showing you today. Yeah, sure. Well, um, well, I have four children Mm. um, and (laughs) their ages are 12, 
eight, seven, and five. Mm. Um, my oldest is, um, she's my only daughter. And then I have three little boys. Wow. And so, um, that is why I take vitamins and coffee every day. <laughs> and coffee like uh, vitamins sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can tell when I don't have them, like something's off. Oh yeah. I didn't take my vitamin. <laughs> so, um, and let's see, we just a few fun things, you know, about us. We have two labs. Um, we have a chocolate lab and a yellow mm. lab. So mm. those are fun. The kids love them. And um, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, actually Mount Pleasant, which is right. You know, it's it's like the suburb of Charleston. Yes. Um, and I've lived here for, gosh, maybe 19 or 20 years almost. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm originally from Southwest Virginia, um, mm -hmm. from Roanoke or Salem, if, you know, if anybody knows that area. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, that's a little about, you know, just me mm -hmm. personally. Um, and I think, uh, you know, let me give you a little bit more background to kind of lead us into the testimony, mm -hmm. um, which is what you want to hear, I think. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but so th uh, this really started, um, you know, a, a few years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you know, I, I was married. Um, my husband and I had been married almost 18 years. So mm -hmm. it, it was a you know, a long time. And again, we had four children. And um, so I'll just kind of, kind of whiz you right into the starting point of this here. But um, mm. I'll just say like, our lives were pretty normal, mm. pretty normal, nothing out of the ordinary, um, you know, in terms of health or anything like that, you know, um, I just, I don't like drama. <laughs> and so um, I try to keep drama away. Um, I have too much to do and in, in, um, to not focus on the other things like that. Right. But um, so in terms of health, um, we were all very healthy, you know, um, rarely did anybody ever get sick. Um, if it tells you anything, I didn't buy, you know, hardly bought band-aids, you know. So, I mean, we were just, you know, kind of, um, blessed, you know, and, um, and then really, uh, it seemed like out of nowhere, um, mm -hmm. my husband started to bump into doorways mm -hmm. and he, as a, as a doctor, you will understand this, you know, um, some of these symptoms, but he started to bump into doorways and, um, you know, it was just off. His balance was off. Um, He's, you know, and, and this started, I would say, you know, the bumping into doorways and that kind of thing started maybe, you know, a couple of weeks that went by. Mm -hmm. And then um, what really happened is um, actually two of my nephews came to visit mm -hmm. and uh, he took the kids somewhere and on the way back, he forgot how to get to, to the house. Mm. He, he, it took him a long time to get home. And, and, um, this is really when it's like the alert, the bells went off. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, you know, obviously I knew enough, um, to know that we speak the word of God, you know, I mean, this obviously is, is a signal, you know, something is going on, didn't know what, um, he, he sort of felt like things were tight, like up in his sinus area, like somewhere in the head. And, um, mm -hmm. he thought it was a, a sinus infection. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, this, this, like, there's a lot of details there, but, you know, to make this, this part a little bit shorter, um, I would, I'd say uh, over the next um, couple of weeks, um, it just started to really, really get more intense. And so we um, went to the primary physician mm -hmm. and just with these symptoms, um, our, our doctor said, tomorrow morning, you're going to get an MRI, mm. like, you know, tomorrow morning, not, yeah. not next week, not three days from now. So it was, it was, um, he, he knew what it was, mm -hmm. but um, anyway, so he had the MRI the very next morning and they called us that afternoon 
and told us that there was a four millimeter mass in the back of his brain. Mm. Mm. And, um, you know, he called it the name. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard this name before. I hear it all the time now. Mm -hmm. And um, immediately referred us to the um, oncologist. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, so this started a period of about three weeks from when, you know, I mean, things were still, they were, they were severely off balance, but they weren't um, to a point where three weeks later, he couldn't walk. Right. Um, he was, he couldn't feed himself. Yeah. He couldn't get dressed. I had to, literally, I became his caregiver and I had to help him get in and out of the shower. Mm. I had to cut his food. And I mean, it, it was just, um, it's heartbreaking to see that, you know, especially, you know, somebody you love and if anybody for that matter, but it's, it's hard to see that, you know, up close. And so, um, anyway, you know, there were a lot of logistics, um, that had to, uh, administrative things with the oncologist office. What are we going to do? What's the plan? Things like that. Mm -hmm. That's going on over here. But then, in our world, what we were doing was um, not agreeing with doctor's reports, you know, respectfully, right? I mean, we know that you've been trained and we see all of that, but we know what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that they told us was that this type of cancer was one of the most aggressive and they gave us um, a time period um, that I tried to completely erase, you know, from ever hearing, I wish I'd never heard it. Yeah. Um, and, and so anyway, it just, it was progressively, literally by three weeks later, by the day we could see decline. Mm -hmm. And I eventually, um, there was no movement from the oncologist's office as far as here, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to, I mean, it was just going on and on and on. So mm -hmm. our primary physician said, you need to take him to the emergency room and they will have to keep him for treatment. So that was our way in mm -hmm. to, you know, to get something done. Right. Um, so anyway, that night, it was a Friday night. We went, they did another MRI and basically within that three week period, um, this mass had grown from four millimeters to larger than a golf ball, but smaller than a lemon. Mm -hmm. And it was pushing on the brain and this was causing all the problems. And so anyway, that was a Friday night, probably 10 or 11. And just to give you like the, the sense of urgency here, what they, they scheduled, um, brain surgery the very next morning it was at seven in the morning wow. so literally just hours later um and so um he came you know came out of surgery everything was great mm -hmm. um they called the surgery successful but you know they obviously there's there's ways of explaining that it's like here we did this but here's here's the downside you know here's the um the visual that you know, it's like, I wish I could erase from, cause it's like, you have to, you have to yeah. um, push it aside and think about truth and, and, you know, truth according to the word of God, like not here's everything wrong that could happen medically. And um, so anyway, over the next year, really the first six months after that, there was chemo and radiation mm -hmm. and he was doing really great, really great. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, changed his diet, you know, a um, lot, a lot of things going on there to help um, slow the, any potential growth that would reoccur and not feed those cells, the right. fuel that they needed to grow. Um, and, and so, and at the same time, we were speaking the word of God. Amen. Okay. So we were speaking the word of God. We knew, so uh, you know, we had gotten to the place where we knew, um, you know, it's not a mystery what the will of God is concerning healing. Amen. Yeah. It's always God's will to heal, always. 
and over and over in the stories of Jesus, he healed them all. Yes. When they came to him, he healed them all. Not one was left. Every single one was healed. Mm -hmm. And so the common factor was Jesus healed them all. And mm -hmm. we knew this. And we also knew the principle of speaking the word. Mm -hmm. You know, we can decree and declare a thing. And the word is spirit and life. And when we speak it, it has to return. Yes. You know, and, um, and it will not come back void. And so um, I'm going to show you something that... Um, <laughs> that we did. Um, I typed these verses up. I know, um, hopefully you can see them here. Page, mm -hmm. page after page yeah. of these verses. In fact, they're falling apart. I've had to tape them back together. <laughs> but these are healing scriptures. And what we would do is just like he would take his medicine, his mm -hmm. chemo, his radiation, mm -hmm. three times a day at least, and all the kids would sit with us and we would read these and declare them as medicine. And, um, you know, it, it, in the process of that, you know, it's interesting, our kids not even trying to memorize, but they memorized Psalm 91, you know, the kids yeah. could all tell us, you know, here's Psalm 91. And anyway, so um, I was just so full of faith that I knew he was healed. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm not going to say knew that he was going to be healed because I already believed that he was already healed. Yeah. Isaiah 53, yeah. you know, which we meditated on over and over and over. He's already healed. Yeah. And, um, and we just took that and we claimed that. And as, you know, as, as we're, you know, going down this journey, mm -hmm. um, also just quoting verses like um, Nahum 1.9, hmm. affliction shall not arise a second time. Amen. This is not going to come back again, you know, and, you know, I, um, I will just say again, like I was so full of faith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for, for he, you know, his healing. I, um, I felt like I was not ignorant concerning the will of God, yeah. you know, whereas sometimes, um, you know, it, it's like, <laughs> Obviously, uh, people believe in the Lord and they're Christians. And there was a point in my life when I, obviously, I believed in the Lord, mm -hmm. but it was still a mystery, you know, as far as what is the will of God concerning this. And um, so as we, as we're walking this out, um, what is going on around us? Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's doctor's reports, right? There's, there's. Uh, communication coming from the medical arena. Mm -hmm. There's continual uh, medical appointments, you know, a constant reminder, you know, that, that this is going on. Um, and, but more importantly, because we can say, um, I believe the report of the Lord, mm -hmm. but there was, as I think of it, and I look back on it, a sea of doubters that were surrounding us, um, you know, close, you know, relationships that we, that we have. Um, but just, you could, you can, you can tell the, the heart posture yeah. and the, the, the level of faith there in terms of, you know, um, so here's a, here's a good example. Um, my neighbor's son had something similar and she did this and he did this and this is what happened for him mm -hmm. and did you go on WebMD? did you read about this and did you read about this and what could happen here and all this and so it was just like um voice after voice after voice after voice um coming with doubt and unbelief yeah. is is really it and you know where you like what i craved was that person to say no i stand with you regardless yeah. and i believe the word of god that healing is for all the time and this situation is no exception yes. and now now within our our little family 
unit here, we were doing that. So, I mean, and we know that where two or more are gathered, yes. you know, and, you know, we know that verse and we were praying in agreement. Yes. So anyway, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Interrupt me if you, <laughs> if you have questions, but um, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit. So about a year after the surgery, mm -hmm. um, we started to see a few symptoms again that were similar to what we had initially seen. And um, again, I was like, no, I don't care what I see. I don't care what it looks like. I know what the word of God says and still continuing to press into what the word of God said and take it and, and you know, um, believe it. Yes. And, um, but, you know, what happened is it, we, uh, the doctor's reports, this is, you know, what we were hearing is that two new masses had grown in a different part of the brain. Mm -hmm. And um, now we were continuing to believe and confess and all those things that never stopped. But we also did go to, uh, a, you know, the best places actually in the country. We went to Duke, we went, you, we, we went everywhere uh, for this kind of thing um, that had the best reputation, the best treatment. And every place that we went said, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. There's no way we're gonna have surgery because it's gonna create more harm than good. And so there's nothing. So we were basically like, you know, we still, or we are believing the word of God, but we've also, we know there's no medical mm -hmm. uh, option either at this point. And so, but again, we kept believing and I was just believing like for a miracle, like a miracle standing in faith that, you know, this thing is going to go back the other direction and it's going to get smaller and and um, because, you know, it has to, because I believe and I'm standing in faith, like, and, um, and so anyway, um, again, I was so full of faith. Um, I will tell you, you know, and, and the kids were as well. Um, we all were. And, um, but, but um, one day, uh, Kevin did go to be with Jesus. And um, I actually, when that happened, I, I, um, like I told you, I had so much faith for his healing mm -hmm. that I, at that moment, I don't think I had enough faith to believe this actually was what had happened. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, so anyway, that started, um, this whole separate journey for me, this whole journey where I had, questions. Oh man, did I have questions. Um, I remember coming back home and, you know, after the services we had in Virginia, you know, we were two states away. We had, we had services there. And mm -hmm. I remember coming back here with just me and the kids walking into the house and I walked into my bedroom and it's like, if I hadn't had enough reality reality was about to set in for me. And I mean, I walked in my bedroom and I will never forget walking in there and it's just being so surreal mm. looking at the nightstand and his glasses were on the nightstand mm. and then mm. walking in the closet and here are his clothes and they smell like him, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and the kids would walk in the closet. The little ones would put his shoes on and walk out, you know, wearing his, you know, his shoes. Yeah. And I literally, Sonia, I, um, I, I just, I knew that I would get through this, but I did not know how I was, you know, it's just, I didn't know how I was going to get through it yes. other than, you know, obviously I, you know, I still had faith in God. I did. I never lost faith in God, but I had, co I mean, I had questions yes. and, um, and so literally for, for about the next month, I would, um, not in front of my children, because I knew I needed to be um, <laughs> as much as possible uh, a, a, a figure of faith for them. 
<laughs> because I did know, let, let me just say, I had peace knowing that he was with the Lord. I know that. Um, it was more of, I had questions like, why did the healing not take place? Right. I don't understand this. Like, I really don't understand this because I, it wasn't a mystery to me. I knew the will of God for all the time. And this was certainly within that definition of all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, we spoke the word, we claimed the word, we took it as medicine. We never agreed mm -hmm. with these outside reports outside the word of God, right. those reports. Right. And I just also started to feel like in a, my own natural um, carnal sense, mm -hmm. vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I was, I was feeling vulnerable because I was single again. And I, I was just like, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. I hated the thought of being single mm -hmm. and worse than that. I hated the thought of being a single mom. And if mm -hmm. anybody should ever call me a single mom, I thought I was just going to like lose it and get really upset and angry, you know, because mm -hmm. that's like, how in the world can I be thrust into this position? Mm -hmm. right. And then on top of that, Sonia, I was so angry that my children didn't have a dad. Mm. That was really, 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 really a sore spot yeah. in, in my heart. And so, so all of that was going on and I would go into my bathroom and shut the door and cry and cry and cry in the bathtub. So my kids wouldn't see me. Mm -hmm. And, um, about a month later, um, I was so exhausted. I mean, I was exhausted, mm -hmm. not only from what I had been going through in this month, but for the last year and a half, I was physically, I was exhausted. I had been mom to four little ones. My little ones at that point were 10 all the way down to one. And I had four, um, not four, but three in diapers mm -hmm. And I was practicing law. All my clients were still demanding, you know, things. I need it now. I need it, you know, I've got needs of my own, like they, you know, and obviously I need to fulfill that. Right. And, and I was being a caregiver and it was just draining me. And I lost weight mm. just out of, not because I wasn't eating, but just because I was, I was just like physically at the end. I, you know, it just took a toll on me. And, um, and so, so I will say, you know, that whole, I, I was, I was mentally and physically just depleted. Mm -hmm. And, and so I remember this was one of these defining moments. Yeah. I was in the bathtub crying. I mean, I was bawling my eyes out. Um, and I heard my phone ring in my bedroom so I could hear it through the door. And my daughter answered it because she knew it was my sister, she could tell. And so she answered, it was one of my sisters. And um, I could tell what was happening you know, in this conversation. So my sister apparently was saying something like, how's your mom doing? You know, and Amory Gale said, I heard her say this, she's crying in the bathtub again. Mm. And that was like, if I couldn't get any lower, I got lower at that point because here I thought I was hiding it and she knew it and it was causing her pain, yeah. you know, and I, that was the last thing I wanted was for my children to like, you know, take on my, my pain, right. you know, because they're already processing things they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I walked out into my bedroom after that. I will know, you know, I'll never forget this few series of things. And um, there was a podcast playing and I don't know who was speaking. It was a, you know, a faith, some kind of faith podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, whoever was talking, he said, um, happiness is a choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I thought, I'm going to gag myself with a spoon. Really? <laughs> this is like, this is like the last thing that I wanted to hear because, you know, um, it, it just, 
it's like one of those things that you, you don't want to hear, but you need to hear. Mm. And I knew it was the truth. I really did. I knew it was the truth. And I literally, you know, I was just so exhausted and I was, I was exhausted from being sad yeah. and I was exhausted from being worn out. And, and so I said out loud, just like this, the little, the smallest little faintest whisper, I choose to be happy. Mm. And I meant it. I really did. I meant it. But um, I didn't feel happy when I said it. Yes. And so what I knew I needed to do was start to be thankful. Um, so what I started doing that night when I went to bed, I sat there and I was, um, you know, like, okay, God, you know if I'm being genuine here, because otherwise I'm not doing this. Right. But I, I'm going to be thankful for something I can genuinely be thankful for. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm thankful for my children. I remember saying that because I, I was mm -hmm. and I, I am. And I said, and this went well today. Mm. Something, you know, something. This went well today. And this was good today. Yes. And so there was just like maybe three things. And I went to bed. And the next day, that, well, that night, you know, the next night, I did the same thing. There were maybe four things. Yeah. You know, and I would start to do that every day. Am I genuinely being thankful for this? And I started to see where I was like, you know, not so low. I was coming up a little bit, but I wasn't where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I was up early one morning. It was probably four o'clock in the morning and I was praying and I... Um, I, I didn't have any other time to myself mm -hmm. to be with the Lord. So it was like, you know, getting up early, that was the option. And so I was up at four in the morning and I remember laying there on my floor in my bedroom, mm -hmm. sobbing. Again, I was being thankful and I was saying, God, I thank you for my children. Mm -hmm. I asked you for all of them. And now I feel like the things that I've asked you for, the blessings that I've asked you for, mm. um, I'm kind of like in bondage to the blessings, mm. not, you know what I'm saying? It's like, cause it's just me wearing all these hats and it's like all this responsibility on my shoulders. And, you know, I asked you for a career. Mm. I asked you for this house. I asked you for these children. I asked you for these things. And now it's like, here, man. Like the responsibilities are all on me. And, um, and I don't feel like this is a life, you know, I, I don't feel like it's just like, I'm, I've got all these responsibilities and there's no life in it, you know? And, um, and I said, you know, but I am thankful for my career. I'm thankful. I don't have to move in with my parents. Yes. You know, I can have a career to, you know, support my family, you know, and, and things like that. I'm, I really am grateful for this. And, and then I said, but I need you to tell me something. And that's how I said it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, not, but in that I'm not thankful for these right. things, but, but like, in addition, I'm asking you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, I, I don't, my heart was like, you know, crying this out, but the way the words came out was, but I need you to tell me something. Yeah. And, and so as soon as I said that, I heard the Holy Spirit say, write a love letter to Jesus. Mm. Wow. And, um, you know, one of the things I have always told my children, and I try to do this myself, not, you know, it's not just like do what I say and not what I do. I try to do it too. <laughs> um, and, you know, we're all learning, but, you know, it's, it's my heart to do this, yeah. um, is just to obey right when I hear those instructions yeah. fully, not leaving any out, not adding to it, but just obeying completely and fully. And so I got my journal out 
And, um, and so anyway, um, hey, we've got a visitor here. Oh, hello. <laughs> <See her>. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, um, you gotta say hi one. to me. No, that's okay. I, I love it. <laughs> okay. So, um, so anyway, I got my journal out and um, I started to write this love letter to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so anyway, here, I, I'm going to read to you what I wrote. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that will really help. Um, this is day one. And let me tell you before I read this, this is um, when I started to write this letter to Jesus, I knew, you know, I obviously I love I love Jesus yeah. and I loved him then when I wrote it, but my heart and my flesh was like, man, I wish I had a love letter written to me, you know, I mean, because I, this is what I'm like, you know, I've, I, it's like been pulled out of my life here and in the fleshly and natural sense, like, you know, I need that, but here I'm being asked to write a love letter to Jesus. And so this is what I wrote. Mm hmm can you go down, please? Thank you, Jesus, for loving me beyond my ability to comprehend. Mm. You are my only source. Only you can truly satisfy me. Mm. You know me, everything about me. You knew me before I was born. You set me apart. You give me a purpose. You make all my empty places overflow and smooth my rough parts. You make my crooked places straight. You make rivers for me in areas of desert. You satisfy all my needs and give me the desires of my heart. You surprise me beyond what I can ask or think. I am so grateful. I love you because of who you are. I set my adoration on you. Yeah. I love that I am yours and that you are mine. I don't want it any other way. I'm so in love with you. Mm. And this is the verse that I was um, thinking about here with Song of Solomon 316, which is my beloved is mine and I am his. Yeah. And actually, I'm going to show you this ring here. I don't know if you could see it. It's this ring. I got this in yeah. Israel, but it's it's Hebrew. I and it says you. that. Yeah, you have one just like it. And um, so it's like we are um, his and, and he is ours. And as soon as I wrote that day one, um, I heard the Holy Spirit say, now here's part two. You did part one just now, but here's part two. You're going to write 90 of these. Mm. So for 90 days, you're going to write love letters to Jesus. And I said, I will do it. I'm, I mean, I, my answer is yes, I will do it. And one of my, um, you know, one of my prayers was that Holy Spirit, I need you to help me be genuine and not just do it because I'm trying to just do it. You know, I'm just not writing letters because I'm fulfilling these, this requirement. I want to do it and I want to be genuine. And, um, I want every day, I want my letter to Jesus to be fresh and I want it to be new and I want it to be deeper. And I want to go, you know, I just want it to go layer beyond layer, deeper and deeper. And that was my prayer. And, you know, um, somebody said to me once, um, you know, that that's really awesome. Um, but, you know, Jesus, he doesn't mind if we just say over and over, I love you. 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 Like, you know, and so no matter how we say, you know, it was just loving Jesus every day. Yeah. Um, and this became my focus. So what happened is, um, during that 90 day period, um, what it started to really, uh, like consume me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I started to, you know, I'd write my love letter to Jesus that morning. It was the first thing I would do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then throughout the day I would be doing my other, you know, uh, you know, to do's and, and those kind of things. And I would be thinking, 
how can I love you better tomorrow? How can I love you deeper? How can I love you in a fresh new way? And it would just consume my thoughts all day. And the next day I would write my letter and then it would, the same thing would happen. I would just be like, okay, for the next day, how can I love you? And, um, and so at the end of the 90 days, I looked back and one of the interesting things is that on the 90th day, it was Christmas, mm. Christmas morning, which I didn't know, which was really, uh, mm. it was a gift to me what happened because I looked back and I realized that somewhere, I don't know at what point, but at some point in this 90 day period, my heart really was healed mm. and it became whole. Mm. And, um, and I knew, just like I knew that it was because I wasn't focusing on myself and looking at myself. Mm -hmm. I was looking at Jesus. Yeah. And that is what brought healing to me and to my heart, to my soul. Um, not that he was, he's always been loving me. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. always loving us. But it's like, is it passing us by? Are we taking it? And, and, you know, you, you hear the saying a lot, you know, it, it's referring to like giving, but it's, you know, receiving and, you know, letting go and that kind of thing. But like, if your hand is closed in a fist, you can't receive, but if it's open and you're giving, you'll receive back. And so it's sort of like what happened with my heart. I was just pouring my love out to Jesus. And in the process, it opened this, it opened this door to my heart where I had actually closed it, yeah. you know, yeah. and healing came and, um, you know, it, it was, it was really, it was remarkable because it was supernatural, first of all. Um, now this doesn't mean that I, you know, beyond that 90 days, like I still miss Kevin, you know, like we miss him and, um, you know, I do know that it was too soon. Yes. It was too soon for him to go. Uh, but but I know he's with the Lord. I have peace about that. I know that. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I, I work with a lot of um, older people in my practice. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of the people I work with, you know, just because of their age group, they do experience this where their spouse passes away. And so I remember sitting with one of my clients and um, she knew this had happened because, um, you know, my assistant had, you know, told her, mm -hmm. she, she, we knew her fairly well. And so anyway, I, I had this meeting with her. It was after this uh, Christmas, you know, so it was after these 90 days. And I remember sitting there and I was just whole, I was a whole person, not sitting there grieving, not sitting there broken. And she said to me, you know, cause she was concerned about, I mean, she was trying, you know, she meant well, you know, there's the, the yeah. people mean well, but yeah. Yeah, meaning well doesn't necessarily mean what the word of God says. Yeah. And so she said, have you thought of um, joining a group for uh, like grieving spouses? Mm -hmm. And I said, um, no, <laughs> I, I, I haven't. Um, I, I don't need that. You know, I'm not uh, you know, I, I don't need that. And I was explaining to her in a way that she would understand, you mm -hmm. know, I, you know, Jesus has come in and he, he really has healed my heart mm -hmm. and he's made me whole. And I, one of the things that I, you know, because we had meditated on Isaiah 53 so much during, you know, before he passed away, yes. um, just in terms of physical healing, but one of the things that I took after that for my own healing process was, you know, Isaiah 53, Jesus took, yes. he took sin. Yes. We don't have to, he took sickness. He took yes. disease. Yes. He took depression. Yes. He took poverty yes. and he took yes. my grief. Yes. 
Yeah. He took all of those things. Grief is included. And I don't have to suffer and be broken with grief, Amen. you know? Amen. And if I believe him for my salvation, why don't I believe him that he has taken my grief? I don't have to suffer with that for years and years and years, maybe my entire life, never being healed and um, brought to wholeness. And so anyway, th that was... Um, you know, a, a big, big factor there as well in taking that truth from Isaiah 53. And so um, I want to share one story for you because I can see we're getting close to the end of this hour, but I wanted to share this with you. And um, uh, you and I talked about this the other day, but at one point, so one of the things that I really learned, and this was such a revelation to me during this, this process, and um I, I didn't say this here, uh, you know, during this hour, but I, I pretty much have um, never been away from the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. I was brought up in a Christian family, grew up. And so from really as long as I can remember, I loved the Lord, you know. And when I was 12, I officially asked him into my heart. And so anyway, um, and I was like one of those teenagers reading my Bible all the time and I was in Bible quiz and, you know, I was always like in the word. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and so I knew that Jesus um, is the bridegroom, but, but I did not um, think of it in a personal way. Like I always thought of the church as this corporate body, as the bride of Christ, right? Like I, I totally get that. And I've always you know, I've known that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until this healing was going on in me that this revelation came to me that, you know, okay, Jesus is Savior to the body of Christ, but I'm taking it personally. Right. He's healer to the body of Christ. I take that personally. Why am I not taking this personally where he is the bridegroom? Yes. And this was what I needed. This was the thing that I needed. You know, this was like the spotlight was on this. <laughs> right. And, and so anyway, during this 90 days, when I was writing these love letters, this was more of toward like the second, third of those 90 days, maybe the last month or so. Mm -hmm. And, um, so this was an experience that I had. And, um, you know, I think so often we give God the big things, yeah. you know. Okay, yeah. hey, I'm going to ask you what to study in school mm -hmm. because it's going to determine, you know, career. I'm going to ask you where to move. I'm going to ask you who to marry. But then all these little things in our lives, we don't really give. But these all add up. Right. To be our life, you know, and so, I mean, this is, this is a life, it's our lifestyle. And so um, I was making dinner and I think this was on a Thursday because it was late in the week mm -hmm. and I had been working all week. I was, again, the theme of this period in my life was exhaustion. I was tired. <laughs> okay. I was so tired. I had been working all week. Um, I was getting emails on my phone from clients, emails from the, you know, the office, messages that had come in, um, all kinds of things. I had to-dos that were piling up. I had laundry. I had, um, you know, things around the house to do, cleaning. Mm -hmm. I had to give children baths, you know, <laughs> and then there was, you know, the things I need to do for myself. So anyway, I was making dinner and I had all sorts of pots going on the stove, you know, I was making, and, uh, and I was at this point where I, I had a jar of sauce on the counter and I need to open this jar. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just walked around, picked up the jar and I tried to open it and it would not open. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so what I did, I tried harder, like with all my strength to open this jar. Like, <laughs> I mean, I was trying. And so, Anyway, it would not open. I mean, this thing was so stubborn, it would not open. And um, and literally then this started, this these thoughts started to, to come and it was, here's what it was. 
you know, oh, this is just a reminder that, you know, Kevin is not here because what I would have done initially, see my, my gut reaction would have been to say, Kevin, can you open this jar for me? Right. right. And, and I couldn't do it. And when I realized I can't even, I can't do this and I can't, I mean, it's this, this stupid little thing of opening this jar, but I can't get the jar open and I can't finish making dinner without it. And I started to get mad. Like here is, this is my life. Like it's affecting every single thing, every area of my life. I can't even get dinner made. This is just ridiculous. Like I'm disgusted. Literally I was, Sonia, I was disgusted yeah. with my life. Like, um, and I just felt stuck and I felt like I was in a trap. Yeah. Honestly, I felt, I felt like it was, um, like being in prison to my own life. And, um, and so I heard this voice, like I sunk down onto the counter and I remember like leaning down like this with my hands like this. Mm -hmm. And this one little tear trickled down my face and I heard this voice and it was the Holy Spirit. And I heard is a question. Mm -hmm. Hey, Crystal, you know how you've been writing love letters to Jesus saying he's everything. He's my source. He's everything. You're my all, you're everything. And you mean it when you're writing that. Yeah. But like, let's apply this to your life right now. What are you going to do in this situation with this stupid little jar, right? What are you going to do? And I stood up and I literally, as if I were going to say it to Kevin, like, Kevin, can you open this jar for me, please? Just in that tone of voice, mm -hmm. I said, Jesus, will you please open this jar for me? And I took the jar and I am not joking, but I took it and it just popped open as easy as, I mean, it was the easiest and it opened right up. And I thought, I will never forget this as long as I live. Like, mm -hmm. it was like one of those, like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing? You yeah. know, like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's so real you know and here we we don't think to apply it or we don't want to apply it or or I don't know what it is but we're just not doing it and um and I so that was one of those moments in this healing process where I said you really are my husband yes like I wanted to ask my husband to open this jar <clears throat> and you be you were him you yes. did that for me and there's other examples, you know, but that's just one, you know, really small, see what it seems like a small thing, but it's a big thing, mm -hmm. you know, and so that, you know, I'd say that in terms of what I learned, if I can share with your listeners, <clears throat> to make Jesus your personal bridegroom, yes. you know, and not think of yourself as one of thousands and thousands and thousands in this corporate body, which you are, but he is your personal husband yes. and you are the one he's looking at and he will take care of you financially. He will love you. He will do those things, even opening your jars while you're cooking. <laughs> yes. And he will love your children, you know, if you have children and they're without a father. Like he will do all of those things yes. for you. And so um, he's there and he's, he just wants us to, to let him be that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yes. And yeah. You know, and I love that. It's such a beautiful story. And I, it, it keeps bringing me back to um, the verse in Hebrews about faith. You know, when we started this uh, hour, we started mm -hmm. with talking about faith and how mm -hmm. you had faith, Kevin had faith, the children had faith, but there were others on the outside who they seem like they had faith, but not. But but it, even with Jesus, we have to have faith. You have to have faith to believe that he is who he says he is. Yeah. 
And yes. you know, so I but, love that in Hebrews yeah. when it says, faith is the substance of things to be hoped for, the evidence of things we don't see. You know, now you just shared my favorite verse. <laughs> <laughs> well, amen. That had to, that was the Holy Spirit because I'm telling you, listeners, we did not discuss that. No. <laughs> it was no. just going in my spirit. Uh-huh. And and it's so true. Even I and I want to say this to listeners, even to the men, mm-hmm. see Jesus as your husband. I know it's easy for you to say, well, as a woman, okay, it's easy for us to say we can see him as your, but see Jesus as your bridegroom, see him as your husband. We have to come to that part where we understand that he is our everything. Mm-hmm. He, he's number one. If you mm-hmm. are married, if you do have a spouse, he should still be number yes. one. He yes. should be the first love. He should be your first spouse. So mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with being male or female. When you have that love and that adoration and just mm-hmm. him in your heart, I love, I, I quote this scripture often, Psalm 16, where it says, in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. And I just love that because that's who he is. He is our joy. He's our strength. He's our, he's our jar opener. <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> amen, amen. And I just love that. So I think we have about, a, a, well, we're at the top of the hour. So I'm just, I'll say a quick prayer so we can go. Cause I know we have another show coming on. Thank you, Crystal, so much for Thank you, being on the show. And yeah. um, Thank you everyone for listening. And I just bless you with that. Let Jesus be your everything. Even if you don't know him, if you haven't given your life to him, it, he is as close as the mention of his name. Just say, Jesus, help me. And he is there. Thank you so much for listening to Hashtag Truth. Thank you for wonderful Crystal. I love her. And just this wonderful testimony. Thank you, Artist First. And we'll see you again next week. Have a good God bless Friday in the mighty name of Jesus, everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye.